Hello guys, in this video we'll be exploring the autosomal DNA, so the predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of a Sarmatian woman from the Caspian steppe. This is a region that was inhabited in the Iron Age by Iranic people, but nowadays Slavic people live there, it's eastern Ukraine, uh, southwestern region of Russia. And this is what she looked like, with Mina Shakot she's predicted to have blue eyes with a neighbor center, Greek shaped nose and blonde hair, with uh, y sex she's also predicted to have blue eyes and blonde hair and with snipper free she's also predicted to have blue eyes blonde hair and white skin she had bh1 and bh2 uh, bh3 is undetermined uh, i can't really say whether she had it or not because she wasn't genotyped for the main variation that minor shakot looks for and um, she had uh, two derived variants in all of the skin color related snp so she definitely had white skin and she did not have any derived variants in MC1R or IRF4, so there is no reason to suspect or believe that she might have been ginger. In the pro pro variation of DRD2, she did not have the European no-go learner mutation that uh, decreases the risk of schizophrenia, so she didn't have this mutation. And uh, she had A2A2 genotype in the TAC1, which is a very typical genotype for all humans. Uh, it comes together with normal risk of ADHD and Parkinson's, which is typical for humans. Um, and um, she had the warrior with the IE genotype in Compt. Uh, now, this is a very stereotypically European genotype to have, and the implications of this in terms of brain chemistry is that she would have more dopamine in her brain, uh, better attention motivation, however, problems with stress resiliency. And she has got derived OXTR, so she has got the sociopath gene. This is what I call the sociopath gene on my channel. And... Um, she had the European lactose persistence mutation. She was able to drink milk, which is a very typical genotype for modern Northern and Central Europeans, not a typical genotype for a Sarmatian for sure. And she also had the European mutation that protects against myopia. So she probably was not nearsighted, probably did not need glasses. When it comes to polygenic risk scores, she had an above average risk score for Crohn's disease an above average risk score for coronary heart disease, an average risk score for Parkinson's disease. Uh, she had a below average risk score for type 2 diabetes, um, an average risk score for bipolar disorder, a below average risk score for schizophrenia, and a average risk score for asthma. And this is what she scores with Eurogenes K13. Now pay attention to this result because this is one of the Sarmatian samples who scores a significant amount of Siberian and East Asian related ancestry. You will see this with the G25 as well. But she's closest to Tatars followed by Tabasarans. Tabasarans, in case you did not know, are indigenous people of Dagestan. And she's getting modeled as a mixture of these indigenous people of Dagestan plus Southwest Finns. Which is very interesting. Which is pretty much the same as what you would see with G25 for this sample. This is what she scores with G25. Now, um, with G25, she's closest to Tajiks, but this is not because she's particularly close to Tajiks. Tajiks are just the closest population to her. And the reason it is is because she's a mixture of Caucasus plus Northeast European plus a little bit of Siberian. So that overall, this mixture brings her closest to um, Tajiks. And what's interesting is she's scoring some ancestral Altaic here. She's scoring some Tungus Altaic, which is a Turkic category too, and overall East Asian components. And because of these East Asian components, she's actually closest to Turkmen from Uzbekistan here, and various Turkic groups. And she's getting modeled as a mixture of Tajik from Pamir plus uh, West Finnish here with the K23B Oracle. Finally, this is what she scores with Pandiana K10. Here she's also scoring a lot of this Beringian category, and Beringian category, from my understanding, is meant to represent Eskimo and Inuit genetics. So she's got some of this Eskimo and Inuit like shift, which is kind of atypical for a Sarmatian. Maybe not such, maybe not so atypical that she would be closest to something else, but still kind of, kind of interesting, right? And with Pandiana K12, she's only got 29% Caucasus HG, which is almost. Uh, it almost fits into what would be typical for a European, but she, not typical. Not a typical result for Europeans still, uh, because with the Oracle she still has a very high distance to all the Mardvins and various European groups. And with the Oracle she is still getting modeled as a mixture of Mardvin plus Baloch or Pashtun or uh, some kind of uh, Iranic person. So still very strong tendency towards Iran relative to Northern Europe. This is what she scores with Ancient Eurasia K6, and what I find significant about this result, uh, once again, I've been talking about this for the past couple minutes, it's the 8% East Asian, right? And with Gidrosia K3, she's scoring 16% East Asian 
um, kind of an interesting result for a Sarmatian, you'd expect them to score a little bit less. Uh, thank you guys for watching until the end. You can actually download this sample in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. And leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video.